Good evening, everyone. Hopefully I can figure out how to keep this up. It just keeps falling down. I'm just gonna leave it like this. It's not all about how I look anyway. It's about the word of the Lord. So, and so today's Bible study is going to be about um, partial obedience. So we know that we could be obedient and we could also be disobedient. But did you know that you could be partially obedient? You could do some of what God has told you to do and not do the other part that God has told you to do, making it um, partial obedience. Yeah, partial obedience and partial obedience is actually disobedience. So um, we're going to be coming from 1 Samuel 15. All right, let me open that up. I'm trying to hold the phone so this phone won't keep on going down. If it goes down, I'm sorry. Just listen to the words. Uh, all right. So 1 Samuel 15, starting at the first verse, and I believe I'm going to read the full chapter of um, 1 Samuel 15. And I'm just going to leave it. Sorry, you guys. And it says, Samuel also said unto Saul, the Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now, therefore, hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. So Samuel the prophet hi bless brat um so samuel the prophet he was sent to anoint saul as king all right um second verse thus second verse thus say if the lord of hosts i remember that which i remember that which amalek did to israel how he laid how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek. I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong. And utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. Okay. All right. Um. So... I'm just keep on going. All right. And so hopefully pay attention to this. Pay attention. Hopefully you guys, whoever is on, you paid attention to what I just said because that's a very important um keynote. All right. So if we go down to the third, um, it, the fourth verse. And Saul gathered the people together and numbered them in Telam. Telam, I'm sorry. 200,000 footmen and 10,000 men of Judah. And Saul came to a city of Amalek and laid wait in the valley. Oh. And Saul said unto the Kenites, or Canaanites, Go depart, get you down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For ye shewed kindness, you showed kindness um, to all the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Canaanites departed from among the Amalekites. And Saul smote the Amalekites from Havela until thou um, comest to shore. That is over against Egypt. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people. Um, all the people. All the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag. See... Remember in the beginning that, um, and we're going to get more into this, but remember in the beginning, the Lord told Saul to um, smite or to kill all of them from the Amalekites. Don't spare anyone, but he right here in uh, what, what verse is this? Um, the ninth verse, he, Saul spared um, the king of the Amalekites. It says, but Saul and the people spared a Agag and the best of the sheep and of the oxen. 
um, and of the fat lengths and the lambs and all that was good and would it would not utterly destroy them but everything that was vile and refused that and refused that they destroyed utterly utterly so everything that seemed um not a threat to them um they kept alive but everything that was more so of that of of a threat they killed okay um then, then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, Okay, so the Lord came to Samuel, spoke to him a word to give back to Saul. Um, let me see. Sorry, I'm reading from a, I normally read from my notes in my phone, but um, I'm reading from the literal Bible, and the words are kind of small, so sorry. Um, let's see. This is a hot mess. Man, my first live Bible study is but um it doesn't matter as long as the word <laughs> gets to who it needs to get to um okay 10th verse like i said then came the word of the lord unto samuel saying um it repenteth me that i have set up saul it repenteth me that i have set up saul to be king for he is, and what he, what the Lord means when he said it repenteth me, it means that um the Lord regrets this. The Lord is upset and he regrets making Saul king. It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king. For he is, for he is turned back from following me and hath not performed my commandments. And um it grieved Samuel and he cried unto the Lord all night. So Samuel felt bad. Um, because of this, he felt bad for Saul, you know, that the Lord felt this way about Saul, okay? And I know many of us, we can feel bad for people when they do wrong and you know that they have repercussions or repercussions um, to face because of their wrongdoings. But we can't have too much pity on people. Um, you can pray for them, but they have to face certain consequences, certain consequences when they do certain things, you know. We can only pray for them. And um, let's see. And when, um, and when, 12th verse, and when Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel saying, Saul came to Carmel. Saul came to Carmel, Lord. And behold, he set him up a place and it's gone about and passed on and gone down to Gilgal. 13. And Samuel came to Saul and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. So Samuel went to um, go look for Saul to give him the word of the Lord. And um, Saul was in Carmel. And um, Saul, you know, when Saul saw Samuel, he's thinking that he did... Um, what was right in the eyes of the lord like he felt like he com he completed or he he completed the task of what the lord told him to do um so we're going to read down a little bit more 14 and 14 and samuel said what meaneth then this bleeding bleating b-l-e-a-t-i-n-g of the sheep of mine ears and the lowering and the lower ring of the oxen which I hear. And so and Saul said, They have brought them from the Amalekites. For the um people spared the best of the sheep um and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna read fifteen again. It says, um, 15, and Saul said, they have brought them, they have brought them from the Amalekites, um, referring to the, um, oxen. For the people spare the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. Then Samuel said unto Saul, stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord hath said to me this night. And he said unto him, Say on. 17. And Samuel said, When thou wast 
little in thine own sight was thou was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel and the Lord anointed and the Lord anointed the king over Israel and the Lord um and the Lord sent thee on a journey and said go and utterly destroy the sinners the Amalekites and fight against them until they be consumed wherefore then wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord but didst fly upon um the spoil and didst and didst evil in the sight of the Lord Okay, wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly up upon the spoil and didst evil in the sight of the Lord? Okay, so basically, why did why did you not obey the Lord, and why have you done evil by sparing their lives? Okay, um, and Saul said unto Samuel. Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and have gone the way which the Lord sent me and have brought, brought Agag, the king of Amal Am the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took of the spoil sheep and oxen, the sheep of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. And Samuel said, And Samuel said, Half the Lord, half the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Is it better to um sacrifice things or is it better to obey the Lord? Okay. Um behold to obey is better than sacrifice. See? Sorry. <laughs> Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. Um, and to hearken then and to hearken then the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idol idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. Okay. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned. Hopefully you guys heard me on the last part. And Samuel said unto Saul, um, and Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have um, transgressed the commandment of the Lord. And thy words, because in thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Okay, so it's, it's Okay, so instead of Saul just listening to the Lord and com and um, obeying the command of the Lord, he did what he felt the people would like. Like he feared the people more than he feared the Lord. And we know we should fear the Lord over people. So we should do what the Lord says, even if it sounds silly, even if you're afraid of if you're afraid of what people are going to say. Okay, we should not fear man. And do things because we know it's going to please man or um, make them feel a certain way or whatever the case is. Okay. Um, let's get back to where we were. Okay, so I'm just going to end there. All right, so we see this. Hopefully, the people that's on, or if God lets me leave this live stream on, um, the pe and you want rewatch it. Um, we see that we see that um in this First Samuel fifteen that um Sam Saul is first anointed king by Samuel the prophet. Okay, and the Lord sends a word to Saul to kill to annihilate um the Amalekites okay but when Saul goes into battle with the um 
Amal Amalekites, um, he decides to spare some of the people with the king and then um, also um, the oxen. So some of the animals and some of the people, etc. OK, he he killed majority of the people, but he did not kill all of them. And God didn't just say kill the people. He said kill everything that are of the Amalekites. So that's the people, that's the animals, that's anything that the Amalekites possess. Okay, and he did not kill all of those. He spared a uh, few or he spared how many, however many it was. He spared those, um, the people and the things of the Amalekites. Amen. Okay, um, yeah. And, you know, the Lord spoke to the prophet Samuel about this. And Samuel had to be the messenger to go back to Saul. All right, so we see all in all, um, I'm so happy that this is speaking to you. I'm blessed, Brett. So all in all, we see that um, um, although Samuel did, um, not Samuel, although Saul did um, do certain things that the Lord told him to do, he did kill part of the Amalekites. He did, he did do some of what the Lord said. He did not do all of it. He, he decided to spare the um, lives of um the amalekites all right and i know i didn't read um all the way down i just thought the lord told tell me to just stop where i was um and sorry about these difficulties but um with the live stream but we're going to keep it pushing all right All right, so with this, I'm not going to read all the way down, but if you decide to read down further in 1 Samuel 15, um, I believe I probably stopped at 13 maybe. If you read down further, you'll see that um, Saul was removed, you know. I'm sorry, had a pop up. We'll see, you'll see that Saul, you know, he got punished for this. And, and later on, David became king. Okay. God later um led Samuel to um to announce Samuel to anoint David as king as a child. So this caused um Saul to lose his position. This caused Saul actually before Saul lost his position, Saul lost favor with the Lord, Saul lost access to the Lord. Saul lost um so the Lord um if so let's let's just say for instance Saul went to go pray to the Lord and I talked about this in one of my um my recent videos um about um about Samuel calling up someone um not Samuel um Saul calling up someone from the dead with the medium this coincides with um that this happened right before um Saul decides to call up the medium. He he decided to use a medium to call up someone from the dead because he could not, um, he was no longer um, in relationship with the Lord. The Lord cut Saul off um, of relationship with him because of this disobedience, because of this partial obedience. Okay, so since he decided to not fully obey the Lord, the Lord cut him off in a nutshell so the lord spirit was never not with him anymore and he can no longer communicate with the lord so this is also why saul would have night terrors too and um would have um he would not have peace and um david david was a um, psalmist and um david would play the harp okay the instrument for him he would play it for Saul. This is part of the reason why um, Saul needed music played for him because the peace of the Lord left from him because of his disobedience um, and, you know, spirits entered and causing him to not have peace for him to be, um, to have those night terrors and those thoughts and everything in his head. He went so basically from his disobedience or his partial obedience, he be, he peace left from him okay peace left from him the lord and the relationship with the lord left from him and he also lost his kingdomship okay he also lost from being a king all of this so we know that um if you guys have any questions you can ask them about the bible study 
and after the bible study we can do some dream interpretation too but um right right now we're just going to focus on the bible study so it's not worth it to be partially obedient to the lord you might feel like well lord i did this of what you told me to do um you know I know I didn't do that, but I did this. No, do everything that the Lord tells you to do, okay? If God tells you to do something, no matter how crazy it seems, no matter how scary it seems, do it, okay? It's worth, it's worth, um, it's worth the, it's worth everything that comes with it, okay? Um, you see that if you be only partially obedient or even if you're fully disobedient, it comes with um, repercussions, okay? It comes with losing certain things. Look at Saul, like I mentioned, he lost his kingdomship. He lost peace and he lost relationship with the Lord. So he can never get any answers or anything from the Lord because of his disobedience, his partial obedience. So, um yeah so many great things come with being obedient to the lord you know um and it, it's not all about getting rewards okay but your relationship with, with the lord is the most important relationship that you have and we all know that we need peace i don't know why i keep hearing that part of the story about saul talking to the median for from different videos on my feed um from different um from different videos on my feed but i haven't interacted with any witches or psychics that's okay because um you know and that's great that you have it i haven't either um but this is in the bible okay i'm not glorifying this and saying that oh look at this is in the bible no but we this is something that happened in the bible that's real Okay, sometimes I feel like certain people or people, we can think that this is only modern times and this didn't happen back in biblical times, but it happened in biblical times. Saul was so desperate to get answers for how to defeat, um, what was it? Was it the Philistines? Okay, the Philistines and Philistines. And he could not get in communication with the Lord. So he could not commune with the Lord. He could not get answers from the Lord. Okay. Um, so he took it upon himself um, to um, go to a medium, okay? And for the medium to call up, he asked for the medium to call up someone from the dead. And the person that he decided to call from the dead was Samuel. Samuel had passed on, okay? And this is the same person that I'm talking about in 1 Samuel 15, Samuel the prophet. During this point, when um, Saul did this, Samuel had passed on. So he went. He decided to go all the way to uh to contact his um his um consultants and for the con and then the consultants found a medium or knew of a medium and they went to her and then um and indoor e n d o r and um yeah the the medium called up the person of his request from the dead and the the person was a pro was prophet Samuel and I didn't even think that this was even possible honestly before I read this because I never really paid attention to this I did read um the books of Samuel before this first and second Samuel but I never really paid attention to this and um and what was I saying and um yeah he um he was so desperate he went to this person and called up Sammy from yeah I was saying that I can't even believe that um a prophet from, of the Lord could be called up from the dead from somebody you know divination it was so um it was so it was um a little weird and astonishing at the same time to me um not you know I'm not happy about that and I'm not you know glorifying that I don't condone those things okay I stick to the word and I speak to to god i don't do any divination and i never had okay for anybody that's wondering i never ever got into that realm but um it was just you know i just didn't expect that and yeah but that's something that we need to know about because it's, it's it is in there save somebody that is in that um realm and they come to you and at, talk to you about this or you know say hey do you know about this or um, try to question your knowledge about the Bible and you don't know about that, you know, you have to be fully educated on the Bible. So, um, yeah. I'm sorry. I know I got a little out of whack with that, but, um, yeah, that's something that we need to know. And, um, 
even though he did in, end up speaking to Samuel, okay, he did not get any answers from it, okay? The Lord did not let Samuel give him answers from being called up from the dead. Um, Samuel basically put him in his place and, you know, you could watch the um, Bible study about that if you want to know more about it. Okay, I was tempted before because I was desperate to hear from the Lord. I'm ready for our relationship to be restored. I feel like Saul. Okay, um, yeah. Don't, I would say, you know, don't be um, desperate for anything. And um, your relationship with the Lord is contingent upon your praise. Um, keep speaking to the Lord, okay? Just know that, you know, no matter what, you know, God is with you and, you know, if anything ever happened in your past or anything like that, forgive yourself from it as long as you repent, okay? Um, the Lord forgives you for it and, you know, when God wants to give you answers for certain things, he will. So if God's not giving you certain answers about a certain situation, um, just know to just stand and just wait for the Lord, okay? Anything else, the Lord, he will provide and he will direct your path, all right? Um, you can read Psalms 23. I don't think that you're Saul or you're like Saul, that God's removing all communication from you, Um, you know? No, I don't believe that. Um, just be obedient to the Lord, okay? So when God directs you to do something, he um, wants you to do something, okay just um be obedient to it okay and you know sometimes we are early on in our relationship with the lord and we might not get the hearing of god telling us sometimes for certain people some people it's already it might be already there but a lot of us you know even for me i didn't always hear from god like you know i'm flowing like this and i might hear god tell me something there in the live stream um i had to develop in that you know god will always speak to me through dreams and and then as i grew in my relationship with god and i grew in in dreams and i started to understand dream interpretation my gift um or one of my gifts and um i would hear god like that and then god started to speak to me you know um you know i could hear the lord speak to me but God can speak to you in many different ways, too, outside of that. If you're not trained yet or you're not there yet, to, um, you know, you don't hear clearly yet with God speaking to you. Um, you know, I can't describe it, but, you know, and having unctions and feelings and hearing the Lord's voice. You, you can, if you can't differentiate yet, I should say, um, you know, God can show you. He knows how to speak to you. He knows the way that you're going to understand best so say if you're not there yet you know god can speak to you in a simple dream he could speak to you through another person he could speak to you through nature or you know you could be walking to the store and then you might notice something at the store and like oh my god that's my answer or you know that's god speaking to me you'll know when, when it's god you'll know okay you'll just know um, I know it sounds a little bit cliche, but it's true. You will know. You don't always know um, when it's a chance that it's not God, but when it's God, you'll know. Um, but I would say don't um, don't drive yourself wild about this. Okay, don't try to go looking for the answers or looking for different prophets or looking for different signs and wonders out there. Um, when God's ready to show you something about a certain situation, he's going to show you, okay? Just when you know that it's God speaking to you, okay, the way that he speaks to you, be obedient to it. And once you're obedient, God's going to speak to you more and more. He, he needs to know that he can trust you, okay? When God knows that he can trust you, then he's going to reveal more and more to you. I noticed that, um, and that's part of, you know... I'll try to leave some biblical evidence once I'm done with this, if I get a chance. Okay, but for my own personal experience, that has happened to me too. Like, um, yeah, me, myself, I did have a dry season where I felt like I wasn't hearing from the Lord. Like, God. And this was after I was already starting to hear from the Lord and I was having a lot of dreams. And then I had a dry season where I wasn't really having any dreams or um, I won't say any communication with the Lord. I was having communication, but like I wasn't hearing anything from God and I really wanted to hear from him. Um, but also um, 
once God starts to reveal certain things to me and then I was obedient with those things and I also say he told me something about another person and I didn't go spreading stuff about the person um you know or um I didn't do it in the wrongful way sometimes God will have you to use to I'm just gonna say it he might have you to expose people. Sometimes he will. Okay. And sometimes God will tell you to confront people. But I'm talking about doing wrong with um, information as far as like gossiping about people with what God showed me. God know that he, God over time knew what God had tested me by showing me certain things. Um, God knew that he could trust me with certain information so god would show me certain things and it was certain things that i need to pray about and pray pray for these people that god was showing me about if it wasn't about myself and it was about others he would use that information that he was showing me and talking to me about so i could pray for these people and as god would show me these things about people and situations and i would pray for it god had started to do more had to started to um show me more and more people or bring up more situations so when god sees that he can trust you he'll he will entrust you with more okay so hopefully that was able to help you out um bless brad okay um god needs to know that he can trust you with the small things first um and then he will entrust you with more so that's that goes both spiritually and physically you know we know about um in the bible the 10 talents and thing and it's a, something else i was thinking about too when god entrusted people entrusted people with small things and then once he saw that he can trust them with more he gave them more um he has been exposing people to me but i haven't said anything because it's not my place so i pray yeah that's good that you pray about it one I won't, I don't want to lead you in the wrong way because majority of the time God won't tell you to expose people but certain situations when you get to a certain place in the Lord he may tell you to expose people and then you may be a person that's of high authority where you can expose people all right and um the Lord may tell you I remember a situation um that a family member had told me about I guess this situation had happened before I was born or maybe I was a baby and this person of high authority um had got knowledge uh, I don't know if they had a dream or not I think that the person may have had a dream and um it was exposed like the dream was exposing how this um person this minister was um doing um bad deeds in the church and um, the person, the person of higher authority, once they had that dream or vision or whatever it was, um, they had considered exposing the person. Um, but then the Lord, I believe, yeah, I believe it was the Lord. The Lord had told them not to expose the person. Okay, so the, the person of higher authority didn't expose this person. And guess what happened? Later on, the person ended up getting exposed anyway. The Lord exposed that person on um their own i believe that this person had ended up um the person had ended up passing away in the pulpit okay this person was doing very very bad deeds in the church okay and i don't say this to scare anyone but this is just facts um i just felt glad to use this um example the lord i heard the lord tell me just say it so i'm just say it okay like I said, I don't fear man. I fear I fear the Lord. Of course, I don't want to go ahead of the Lord and do stuff just because my feelings. I try to listen to the Lord regardless of my feelings. So remember that. Always listen to the Lord before you even listen to your feelings. Because your feelings can lead you astray. And um, leave everything in the Lord's hands. If the Lord doesn't tell you to do something, then don't do it. Okay? Because like that example that I just gave... Um, the person could have been exposed by that person when the Lord revealed that to them in the dream or vision, but the Lord decided to expose them on their on their own, um, on His own, and for them not repenting and turning from their evil ways, they end up losing their life. Okay, so certain things just aren't worth it. All right, you guys, so I'm going to go ahead into the dream interpretation portion of, um, excuse me, 
excuse me, of this um live stream. Hopefully you got um, some knowledge from the um the Bible study. I'll title this after maybe if the Lord lets me keep this up. If he tells me to delete it, then I'm just gonna delete it. Um All right, so I have a drain picked out already. And if anybody has any other ones, um, if you like, a, if and if I um, and if I decide to interpret your dream, I did one of your dreams in a live stream. Then please let the, another person get a dream interpreted. We're gonna do one per person in each live stream, unless the Lord tells me otherwise. Okay, so this one says, um. And I wrote this down. And so I get another tablet. I you know, I'm gonna I'm going to be writing down the dreams in my notepad. Um I I believe I was at my old pastor's house and everyone was there. My family and people I went to school with and some YouTuber I watched was there. Um so I went to the bathroom to pee and it was messy and she had backwards in the cup so um i know backwards it's like the little cigars that come in the pack that people smoke <laughs> i know this because like i know many people i never i don't smoke i never have been a smoker but i know like people that smoke stuff like this backwards and my brothers they used to smoke black and mouse and things like that so i know what backwards are all right um then more people from that church started to pull up and come in the bathroom and we started arguing um she came from a side door of the bathroom she came from a side door of the bathroom but it wasn't her i guess she so i'm guessing she looked like one person and then turned to another person um, sometimes that happens to me. It starts off as one person, then it ends up another person. I don't know why dreams do that, but hey, sometimes it does that. Um, she had a face of comedian Monique. Okay, I know who Monique is. And she had all of this makeup on her face and she looked tired. I even started to argue with my grandmother and aunties, and they're not even a fan of her. Okay, they're not even a fan of Monique. Okay, then everyone decided to kick me, to kick me out the house. They said I had to go, so they started helping me to. They started to, so they started helping me try to pack, but I told them, I told them to put my stuff down. Then two people I know of, a black boy and a white girl, started making out and saying, if she said I'm her boyfriend, then we together. All right. All right. So this is an interesting dream. I'm going to get right into it. it. I see that you feel during this time that a lot of people are against you. Lots of people, you feel like everyone is against you, or at least a lot of people are against you during this time of your life. Um, uh oh, you know, I've been there, you know, hurt by many people, feeling like people are like, like people are, um, out to get you, or people are like betraying you. And some of that might be true, you know, you might have some people that are, that are actually betraying you, and then, you know, it's just a lot, it's a lot, okay. Um, uh, something that really stood out to me. Okay, you there's many different people in this atmosphere. Um, um, at your old pastor's house. Oh, they're not a fan of the pastor, not Monique. Oh, okay. You were arguing with your grandmother and your auntie, and they're not even a fan of the pastor. Okay. Um. But were you a fan of the pastor? Like, um, where do, did you personally before any of this, um, that's happening in your life, um, did you like the pastor? Like, um, were you okay with the pastor as a pastor? Did you like them as a pastor? Things like that. That's what I mean.
Okay, and um, so yeah, all these different people were at this house. Okay, people from that you know from different places. So, your um, people that you went to school with. Okay, I don't know if it don't matter if it's high school or middle school, but people that you went to high, uh, school with, um, your family members were there too, and a YouTuber that you watch, and people from your old church were there. So people from all these different different atmospheres that you have um that you're in or that you have been in were there. All right, and then. You went to the bathroom to pee, so that can often represent um, deliverance, that you're going through a form of deliverance during this time, which is good. That's a good first step. Cahoots to you. And, um, yeah, I noticed that you said you saw the um, person's face. Um, I believe that was the YouTuber that you know. Her face had turned to um, Monique's face, the um, comedian Monique from the Parker's. I used to be really close to her. Okay. All right. So you, so basically you see this, um, with the pastor, you see this person in a really good light and, um, but your family doesn't see this person in a really good light. I'm not sure why they, they don't. Um, so you felt like they were, I'm guessing that you felt like they were like defending that person, even though they don't even like her or they don't even know her well enough to even like her like that. Wow. You, that's your family like you're my family okay you're my family and you're over here defending this lady that you don't even care about like that like how how is this even right you know i'm the one that you know was cool with her so why would you even get offended all right but um i noticed um that she said that the the one woman looked her face had started to, or her face was like monique's in the dream all right and she had a lot of makeup on and she looked tired so i'm saying i'm i know a little bit about monique's story monique um she was abused as a child okay um she revealed this in different um settings like basically she was uh, abused by one of her brothers okay so it doesn't mean that this person was abused the same way that monique was abused monique was sexually abused i believe she was raped i don't she was either molested or raped. And I know some people might say, oh, isn't that the same thing? But molest could just be someone, and I don't lim um, minimize that, but rape could be the full act with somebody having sex with you without your permission. And then molestation can be, you know, you, you could even be molested by somebody um, groping on you, touching all over you without your permission, but not going all the way with, with sexual intercourse without your um, knowledge or without your permission. Um, so one of those things had happened to Monique with her own brother. Um, so the person, they have been through some type of abuse, um, I'm assuming, um, and maybe you don't even know that personally, but they may have went through some form of abuse with someone that they know. There's different types of abuse. There's not just sexual abuse. So this person could have went through verbal abuse, mental abuse, some form of abuse with someone that she's close with. All right. Because Monique, she's been through abuse. And she also, <coughs> she also talked a little bit about this in her last stand up. And she cussed a lot in this stand up. So I'm not recommending that people go watch this. I'm not um an advocate for that but i did so happen to watch it when it came out you know and she told a little bit more of her story and struggles that she had and you know her putting up certain desires and things like that um but yeah she was abused when she was young and um yeah I, like i said she i knew when i watched the um special that she had on netflix you know um she talked about things like that and yeah, she wants to detail a, a lot of details about her personal life, basically. So, yeah, I'm seeing that this person that um you see is they've been through some form of abuse and um she had a lot of makeup on. So I guess, this, you know, she may be trying to cover up, you know, her feelings during this time or have done this in her lifetime. You know, put on the makeup, you put on makeup and cover up all the scars and cover up some of the hurt. Okay, and even makeup can make you feel better about yourself. Maybe they've been, this person has been through a lot and, um, you know, they want to doll themselves back up. You know, they may feel like they have 
they just feel like they need to do something extra to bring themselves back okay and then um you know everybody said everybody had kicked you out of the house and um you know they was trying to help you pack and all that stuff so basically i see that yeah this and you did just mention that you recently left from your place um uh, from from your um church that you were in so basically you see that um you feel that a lot of people um don't want you there or and you feel like you've been kicked out i hope that's not the case that you got physically kicked out okay um no one should have to go through that um but just pray that god will help deliver you from um i'm going to read your comment in a minute before i say this um right after i say this i'm sorry i you know i just pray that you just pray for god to give you deliverance in this situation that god will heal your heart he will mend the brokenheartedness um that you're facing right now he will um deliver you from all of these um things that you're feeling and that you're going through sorry about that i clicked on something on my phone but yeah um just Stay in commune with the Lord. Your relationship with the Lord is the most important. It's better than your relationship with any other person in this world. I'm not telling you to be um, to be a loner and to not commune with anyone else. But just know that your relationship with God is the most important. Um, so, yeah, pray to him. Tell him how you feel about this situation. He knows it, but it's good to remind the Lord about how you feel. Like, get all up in there when you're praying to God. Like, God, I feel this way. They betrayed me. Like, that's how you feel? Okay, maybe it might not be truly what it really is, but maybe this is how you feel at the moment. If you feel that way, put it on in there. Lord, they betrayed me. Um, they did. They did this and that to me. Okay, that you felt led to leave the church, okay. Um, but you may still feel hurt that you had to leave this church because um you were once close to the person and you received confirmation so great. So just know that God has better for you, okay. If God led you to leave this church, then God has better for you, okay. Um it might seem like a good may have seemed like a good thing, and maybe it was for a season, but you know, God does everything for a reason. And um, yeah, God has better for you, something that's good for you, where you're going to um, learn more about the word and where you're going to grow more spiritually. And as a person, God's going to lead you to that place, however he decides to do it. And just keep on working on your relationship with the Lord. All right. All right. So I hope that was able to help you keep on um, pressing and keep on um, keep on growing in deliverance. All right. All right. God's going to reveal even more to you about this too. Okay, I just heard God gave me okay the okay to say it. God's going to reveal even more to you concerning this. Okay, so just stay and commune with the Lord and don't worry about anything. God's going to lead you and guide you, and more things are going to be exposed. All right. So if anyone else has any um, questions or comments it could be about the bible study we just talked about partial obedience from first samuel 15 or if you have a dream question you can leave that in the comments drop drop that gorgeous hi welcome to the live stream hey girl so it says hey i had a dream that i was on a bus alone i and i ended up getting off the bus and ended up on okay you're welcome um I was on the bus alone. I ended up getting off the bus and ended up on the bus with a group of people that I used to hang out with. And they were laughing at me. I got embarrassed, so I got off. You were on the bus and you ended up the on the same bus as the people, as a group of people that you used to hang out with. And they were laughing at me, at you. And you got embarrassed. All right. So um, normally if you're on 
if you're on any um okay should i read this part before i even read your, your last comment i'm going to um i'm going to um say what i see um so you're on a bus so buses and vehicles can often represent um your destination where you're going in life and also it can represent ministry too so if you're on a bus that's normally if you're on a bus or a train that means that god's taking you to a new level um it can mean that god's taking you to new heights god's taking you to a somewhere new okay and um you while on that bus you saw people that you used to hang out with but they were um laughing at you so this made you feel embarrassed so i don't know what god's doing in your life right now what he's about to do in your new season um but no matter what people say about you maybe they might say you're a holy roller or um they might say that you're you're a holy roller or that um they may have laughed at your circumstances, wherever you're going through, or maybe you may have fell. I don't, I'm not saying that you have, I'm just naming different things so that people can, um, oh, it was a totally different bus, but you saw them and they were, uh, okay, before I get old, they were on a different bus than you were, but you saw them, or did you start on one bus and then you ended up getting on another bus with those people? Either way, no matter what people think about you, keep on going. Do not get off that bus. Do not get off of what God um, has in store for you. Do not um, get off track of what God's leading you to do during this time or what he's going to lead you to do. Keep on going. And then I'm going to read the last part of your comment. I ended up saving some lady in the house from an abuser or something. And I went back outside and the bus and the buses were gone. Um, I ended up saving some lady in the house from an abuser or something. And I went back outside and the buses were gone. Uh Okay, so you try to save someone who was being abused. All right. So I see that you're trying to do a good deed. You're trying to be a good um, civilian or a good um, Samaritan. And, um, but this has caused you to miss your bus. When you went back outside, the buses were gone. So we have to know it's why it is good to help people and do that and it may seem like you should have helped the person okay you get you end up getting on another bus okay awesome um um so it may seem like it's a good deed for you to help um people like it, it would have seemed to be a good deed to help somebody that's being abused right um but does this person even want help okay so we can miss our own blessings because we're trying to help people and god may not have you um to help someone they might seem like they're in real they're in a really great deal of um need or they need help and it seems like it's a good idea to help them because of the circumstance that they're in but god might not be leading you to help this person okay not if it's going to make you miss out on your opportunity um, anything that God has you to do is going to line up with what he has in store for you. God's not going to let you miss out on your opportunity to help anybody or to do anything. So if God's leading you to do this, he's leading you to help someone. He's leading you to um, do something. He's not, uh, he's not going to make you miss out on your opportunity. He's not going to let you... He's not going to put it in perspective for you to miss out what, on what he has in store for you. So just remember that. Um, and we must also know that we, we cannot help everybody. Okay. Some people really do need help in life. But sometimes God may have you to help that person at a later time. Or he might have somebody else to help that person. He might just want to deal with them on his own. He might not want um, any physical beings you know any other human beings helping this person but he wants to deal with this person spiritually okay or this person might just 
be so um what the what is it called they have a reprobate mind where they have it in their mind that they're going to just stick to this one situation forever they're not going to change their mind when someone has that reprobate mind you can't change them you can't help them i'm not saying that the lady had that type of mind but i'm just saying sometimes we encounter people that have that type of mindset and we can't help them so you have to be led by the lord when it comes to certain things especially when it's your time for harvest Okay, because you can mess up everything that the Lord has for you um, if you do the wrong, if you decide to do certain things. Okay, I have been there when I felt like I should help certain people. And during my harvest seasons, I've had many different harvest, se harvest seasons. And um, yeah, certain things weren't worth it. Okay, and it ended up messing me in the long run. You know, I lost many of things because of this. Um, and even if it's meant for you to help someone you still have to have boundaries too because i've been there too when i know that the lord showed me certain people to help them or they were going to be in my life and then they didn't follow through i'm just saying they didn't follow through and it caused me to mess up because i didn't have certain boundaries or i was just putting them up you know i i just i didn't do certain things that i could have done i was just having that person too much in mind and it messed me up too so when god has certain people lined up for you to help or to to be in you know the atmosphere of you okay um have boundaries with them and then certain people if you feel like you may help them but they have um a bad reputation or you know you have had bad experiences with this person or they're in a very bad um situation or environment pray about it first to make sure that's what god wants you to do and like i said if god has you to do that for the person have boundaries with them too because you could be doing some like i mentioned you could be doing something right to help someone etc etc but if you don't have the right boundaries in place okay then um then it could go left it could things can get messed up from there so i hope that was able to help you i know i said a lot i've been talking a lot and does anyone else have any more questions hopefully that was able to help you and thank everyone for coming onto the live stream thank you for joining if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Um, this uh, um, this live stream was intention was intended for a Bible study. Um, we we're talking about partial obedience. We we're talking about Saul and Samuel, and the Amalekites. Where the reference was First Samuel fifteen. Okay, and. And um, Samuel basically saw was given a word from the Lord. Um, saw was given a word from the Lord to smite or to annihilate or to kill all of the Amalekites. That's people and animals included. And he did some of what the Lord said. So he slayed most of the Amalekites, but he spared the king and he spared some of the good oxen, oxen and sheep. And that caused him to be in disobedience with the Lord. Hence, partial obedience because he did part of what the Lord said. And then, the, you know, then the rest he didn't obey. And this caused him to um, leave. You're welcome. Stop, drop dead, gorgeous. You're welcome. And this has caused him to be, um, he lost um, all fellowship with the lord all communication with the lord he lost his peace as well eventually and he even lost his kingdomship from him being disobedient he lost he was um no later on he la he was no longer king okay <sighs> so if any, no one else has any more questions okay if no one else has any more questions then we're going to end the live stream and i'll see you soon Debbie, okay, hey, I have a question. Hey, Debbie, welcome to the live stream. How can you tell the difference between your emotions and God's will? Oh, that is a great question. 
Okay, so let's say. Okay, normally God's will is normally not something that we normally want to do, okay? Um, it's normally outside of our own personal desires. Normally when it's something that's God's will. Okay, let's think about um, something in the Bible. Okay, so we can even just think about David, okay? When he was a child. He was just tending to the sheep in the field, right? He was just a young child, however old he was. He was um, tending in the field. He probably loved the Lord during that time, but I'm pretty sure he had nothing in his mind about being king. It never said that David dreamed all his life to be king and he wanted to rule and he wanted to do this and that, right? Um, but he was anointed king by... Um, by um, by prophet Samuel, by the prophet Samuel. So it was the will of the Lord for David to become king. But um, David's emotions may have been to just be young and to, to just um, tend to the sheep and the animals out in the, the flock, out in the field, and, um, you know, even to play music. That may have just been his personal desires or his personal emotions and um it's, it was god's will for him to be anointed king and even joseph okay joseph was a dreamer um but god showed joseph a dream that um he was going to um his brothers were going to bow down to him okay i'm pretty sure that wasn't a desire or any emotion for him that was his own personal desires or emotions like oh i want to be king i want people to bow down to me even um okay and but he he saw what the lord had showed him through a dream that was the lord's will for him to eventually um to be um be in um gov in government if you will say i can't think of the word i'm so sorry um, it was his will to to be in leadership in that type of way. Um, but that wasn't his emotions. The dream wasn't part of his emotions. We can have dreams and they could be a part of our emotions. Um, but then we can also have dreams that's part of God's will. So that wasn't his own em emotions, him him wanting or desiring those things. But we see that it came um it came into fruition. It came into it happened. Okay, so that was God's will. So hopefully that was able to help you out. Does anyone else have any uh, more questions? And even, even some of our desires can become God's will too. Or, you know, God can bless some of our desires. Some of our personal desires, if we're great at something, God can bless it. All right. David, he was already a psalmist. And um, he tended to the flock. And God used his, his ability to play great music and to sing to help, um, you know, even though God left from Saul, it was able to help Saul for a season. He played for Saul to help relieve him of his, um, the spirits, the stress, and he didn't have any peace from those spirits. So yeah, God can even bless your desires too, or what you're naturally good at. So I hope that was able to help you guys. Um, if no one else has any questions, I'm going to leave from the live stream, and I'll see you in another one. This is bye-bye.